Hi, this is Tina Monk, the owner of Natural Suds and More, and this is a video on how I make my cold process luxury spa bar, and I will also go over how to work with clays, how to mix them, and I show you how to do the side angle pour and the hanger swirl. Now, since this is cold process and I want to have time to work with it, my lye there is about 85 degrees and my oils are around 90-95. I want to make sure that I have a plenty of time to work with this. And I normally don't soak too much colder than 85-90 degrees. I still have plenty of time to work with it at that temperature. And this recipe is in my book, The Soap Making Handbook, Volume 1. And you still have time, as of this recording date, <laughs> to subscribe to my website, www.naturalsudsandmore.com. Once you subscribed, you will be able to get the discount for the book when it is released in a couple weeks. So if you want it and you want to get the discount, uh, please subscribe. You still have time. And yes, it's naturalsudsandmore.com. And please make sure to add naturalsudsandmore at outlook.com. Add my email address to your address book so that my emails don't go to your junk folder. And that'll all that's at the at the end of the video too, where where to subscribe at and follow me and everything is at the end. But when I'm mixing this, I d do short bursts, and I don't go I don't go to trace at all. I I want to make sure that I have plenty of time to work with this, and I just put these put the essential oils in, and I use. For this one, I use lavender, grapefruit, a little bit of rose, and a little bit of patchouli. And I also add um, four different butters for this recipe. I use uh, cocoa butter, shea butter, mango butter, and kokum butter. I also use a little bit of jojoba oil. So there is a little bit of pricier oils in this one. That's why it's the luxury spa bar. And I do use... Um, my colors are activated charcoal, French green clay, and rose clay. I have made this soap several times, and it's a, one of my top sellers. Some people, if you, if you love patchouli, this is a great soap. And what I do before I even start mixing the lye into the oils is I already have my clays pre-mixed. And I use one teaspoon of clay per pound of oil, and I use um, distilled water, and I always pre-mix my clays with water. And you want to make sure that your clays are fully absorbed. Like, you can't, you want to make sure it's, it's runny, because if they're thick, they haven't um, reached their capacity yet. Like they can, some clays will be able to absorb more water, and you'll need to add more water if it's still like a thick paste. You want to be able to make sure that your clays have absorbed all the water they can absorb before you put your soap into it, because if not, your clays are gonna act as a thickener and an accelerator, and you will not have as much time to work with your soap. So pre-mix them, pre-mix your clays with water and then add your soap to it, and then don't stick blend the clays in. I just use a spatula or a whisk, and that will give you a lot more time to work with it. So don't, like, put your soap in a separate container and then put some dry clay in. <laughs> that will thicken it way too much. So do it like I said, and you won't have any problems. You soak colder, and you pre-mix them with water, and you're good to go. Now this is the side angle pour here, and my boyfriend is great. He built this little thing for me so I can sit the mold at an angle, and it works really, really good. Now how I soap is I do enough at a time to do two molds, and I normally like to um, just, I don't know, I like to make them look different, so I'll do one 
like here I'm doing one that, with the side angle pour and then the back one there is going to be the hanger swirl. So this one in the front, um, you, you'll be able to see the, the little wood thing that he made <laughs> later, but um, it's just, it's, it's really great to hold it and I don't, I made it so much easier. Like in the beginning when I was making stuff and I'm like, oh, this is so, I can't do any of this stuff. And he was like, well, let me go build something for you. And I'm like, that's awesome. <laughs> and I'll show you the hanger swirl that he built for me too, which is awesome too. But the side angle pour, I put like a little bit in the bottom, the base, and then I just take my colors and I just go make streams all the way down and depending on if you want a thicker line or whatever it just depends on how you pour it how you want it to look so I'm doing really really thin lines here but if you wanted to do um, you know thicker ones just pour more so it's just it's up to you how you want it to look I've done it several different ways and I I like the the finished look of the side angle pour too so it's just a way to get a unique, uh, kind of like a hidden swirl in it, if you, I guess if you want to say. But then I just keep going back and forth, and I've done this enough where I, I just eyeball it. Like, I'll have the three colors in the, the spouts containers there, and then I'll just use like half of it for one mold and then half of them for the other mold. And I sped this up a little bit to uh, get the video moving a little bit more. And actually, like, I'm lifting it up so you can see a little better. It's hard to have just the camera <laughs> above me and try to get the angles that I want to get. But this is one of my favorite soaps, and I love the way this smells, especially with the, the cocoa butter. And I don't know, I just, I really like how the, the chocolate smell comes through with the essential oils. It just, it's, you know, it smells great. And it's, people absolutely love it. They pick it up and they're like, oh my gosh, this does smell like a spa. <laughs> so. But I'm just pouring lines back and forth all the way pretty much to the, the top there. I'll take it off. You can kind of see what he built there for me. And for the hanger swirl side, I'm just pouring at like different heights a little bit so it breaks the surface and some of it doesn't. There's just there's no real rhyme or reason to it. It's just just doing um, drop swirl. And I always leave um, a little bit left of the colors, enough to do the top um, for both of them. So it's really just, you know, practicing and eyeballing what you're going to want to leave for the top. And when I do um, my recipes, I I make enough so that there's a like a half inch space at the top, so that when I go to cover, I cover all my soaps with plastic wrap at the end, so that help to pre prevent soda ash. I'll show you that too at the end, but I always leave enough space. And right there, that's that's how I pour onto a spatula, so I don't break the surface and ruin the side angle pour design I'm pouring very gently on the top
so it's just a lot of eyeballing and just trying to get it you know it's it's not exact it's not perfect you know like one side might have a little bit more soap than the other but yeah it's it's soap it's art <laughs> I'm just scraping the rest of what's in the crock pot. I'm going to beat them on the mat I have on the floor to get, some, get it evened out and get the air bubbles up if there are any. It really helps to smooth out the, the soap a little bit too, beating it. But you can see that I've had plenty of time to work with this. This is the hanger swirl tool that my boyfriend makes. And this has saved me and I absolutely love these and he makes them. So if you're interested um, and you want one, please contact me, just email me. And we can do, he does custom orders and makes them uh, fit your mold. He takes the stainless steel and bends it, and he puts the wood handle on. So, I mean, they're great, because when I first started trying to do this, I was in, using an actual hanger, and I'm like, this is ridiculous. <laughs> so he's like, well, let me see what I can make. And I'm like, oh, this is awesome. So if you'd like one, please contact me, because it's, it's amazing. <laughs> And like I said, I just leave a little bit left of the soap to um, decorate the top and do the top swirl. And, you know, and there's no rhyme or reason. It's just I'll put uh, strips down. And then I use um, a bamboo skewer to do the swirls. And I always try to use up, you know, as much soap as I possibly can. Like, I use activated charcoal all the time. Like, I know I've, I've really, like, when I first started soaping, I used a few oxides, but I didn't really like how they turned out in the cold process soaps so and I've always really liked clays and uh, activated charcoal and I've started using the Brazilian clays uh, from brambleberry.com the purple and the yellow and yeah like I really like them and they look really good in the soaps but yeah just keep in mind that when you're working with clays you want to soap colder and uh, pre-mix them with water so that they're saturated so that they don't thicken your soap and you don't want to stick blend them into the soap you want to stir them and that you won't have any problems with them and like you know whatever design you want to do it's it's up to you and I I usually play with it and do different things and you know it's just whatever I feel like that's just what happens And um, to prevent soda ash, I will spray the top of the soaps with the 90% rubbing alcohol. Especially when I'm working with charcoal, because the charcoal does tend to get ashy. And then I'm wiping off the edges just to make sure that the plastic 
wrap can seal better. But that's how I uh, prevent soda ash, is spraying with the rubbing alcohol on the top. And then I put the plastic wrap on. And I've, I haven't had any problems with doing that. And I some of the soaps I will leave covered for two days even, um, just depending on my recipe. And then, and then it works very well to do it like this. I know some people like don't care about the soda ash, but I try to avoid it as much as I can. And of course, if you do hot process, you don't have to worry about it, but <clears throat> but then I will um put the molds together a little bit and then <clears throat> cover with a towel to help insulate it a little bit to get the full gel. And there's the side angle pour cut. And there's the hanger swirl. So thank you very much for watching. And please subscribe to my channel for more videos. And please share and like the video. You can also subscribe at naturalsudsandmore.com. And please make sure to add my email address to your address book. And you can also like my Facebook page, follow me on Instagram and Twitter. Thank you.